Thank you for watching AM Northwest this morning. Our next guest is wellness edu is a wellness education director at Smith College, where she also teaches women's sexuality. Her groundbreaking new book will help all women feel normal. Here to tell us more, we welcome the author of Come As You Are, Emily Nagoski. Good to have you with us, Emily. It's so great to be here. What prompted you or inspired you to write this book? I taught women's sexuality at Smith for the first time in the fall semester of 2010. And I shoehorned in as much science as I could into a 100 level class. And then at the end of the semester, I asked them to write down one really important thing they'd learned in the class. And what they wrote was not the evolutionary psychology or the anatomy. What they wrote, over 187 students, more than half of them just wrote, I learned that I'm normal, that I'm normal, that there's, even though I'm different from other women, that doesn't mean I'm abnormal. Oh. So I'm reading, it's on the final exam, right? right and I'm grading my final exams with tears in my eyes, which is not what it's like to grade final exams usually, <laughs> feeling like there was something really important that had happened in the class, and I wanted it to be accessible to people who weren't students at Smith College. Is this a book uh, for just women, or is it a book and a class for men? It's about women, mostly, largely because almost all the science and writing that's been done before is about men and the way men work and we sort of assume that men are the default sexuality and women are the sort of like men's sexuality light, the sort of substandard version and that's all wrong. Women are not identical to men and understanding the way they actually work helps us to understand how everybody works. What are the biggest misconceptions that men have about women's sexuality? I think desire might be the most common misconception, and women have it too. The standard line about desire is that it's spontaneous. It just appears out of the blue, like your fairy godmother, mm -hmm. or the great gazoo on the Flintstones, where it just appears, poof, I would like to have some sex. Where can I go to get some sex? And that is how some people experience desire some of the time. But it turns out that it's also possible to experience desire as responsive, where you're not thinking about it, you're just like flipping through a magazine, and your partner touches your arm or kisses your neck, and your body goes, oh, right, that's a really good idea. We should do that. So spontaneous desire emerges in anticipation of arousal, and responsive desire emerges in response to arousal, and both of those are normal and healthy. One of the things you talk about in the book is, is the role that stress plays mm. on sex and, and desire to have sex, and it really is a killer. Yes, for 80 to 90% of people, stress hits the brakes. It turns things off, it reduces your interest in sex. There are people, 10 to 20% of people, for whom stress actually activates their interest in sex. Hmm. But for most of us, um, so stress is this physiological response intended to help us survive threats, like being chased by a lion. Is being chased by a lion a good time to be turned on and interested mm, in sex? No. Yeah, so it makes sense that stress would shut down interest in sex. So, so for women, when we're, when we're talking about you know, heightening their sexual awareness and arousal and, and, and a more satisfying life, uh, because, because I think modern day women have a lot of stressors in their life. Mm -hmm. How, how do they cope with that? What do they do? You say in the book, alcohol is a bad idea, which is the first thing a guy would offer. Right. Yeah, because all alcohol does is turn stuff off in your brain, and you want to be turned on with alcohol, uh, well, with a sexual arousal. So instead, you can do things to reduce the stressors in your lives, but there's a lot of stressors you can't. Like, if you have a particular job that stresses you out, right. if you have kids that stress you out, you can't sell the kids to the circus. Right. But there are things that you can do not to deal with the stressors, but to deal with the physiological stress event that's happening inside you. Physical activity is the single most efficient strategy for draining the stress away from your body and returning you to a sense of feeling safe and whole inside your body. Affectionate time with people you trust is another. It shifts your body chemistry into a place of feeling safe and warm, and it opens the door into further intimacy. Sleep is also, there was just a study published that showed that one extra hour of sleep per night provides a 14% increase in the odds of having sex the next night. Um, so if you were to sleep 20 hours, <laughs> chances are you'll wake up and be very busy. If you're sleeping 20 hours, there's probably something else wrong. Oh, okay. All right. So guys have the blue pill. Do you, do you ever see a day women will have a pink pill? They're looking for it, and uh, the most promising results I've read so far, you tell me, 
before they take the pill, women uh, report feeling 50% satisfied with their last sexual event. That's, that's an F, 50% satisfied. Right. Um, they take, uh, they drop testosterone under their tongue four hours before the next sexual event. Then they take a pill two and a half hours before the next sexual event. Then they have the sexual event. That increases their satisfaction all the way up to 60 percent which is a D minus right so does Not that count working. as effective no. I think we could get better results if the woman felt really comfortable taking as long as she wanted to to become fully aroused and felt that she and her partner both felt really good about her body and her sexuality they were not worried that anyone's gonna walk in and if a person has a trauma history that they've had an opportunity fully to heal that these are all things we know can improve sexual okay well, very quickly then how do how do how does the partner help a woman with that if time maybe is the elixir um, how does a partner help with that because sometimes men are impatient yeah so that impatience comes from a belief that we've learned from our culture that it's supposed to take a certain amount of time to get turned on and go through the arousal process and all of that is untrue the fact is people just vary but you can start thinking about kind of everything you do as foreplay and as adding the potential for sexual connection. In other words, start at breakfast. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. The book again is titled Come As You Are. Uh, Emily Nagoski, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Great thank book. you. Very really interesting.